The Dell XPS 13 is an absolute marvel of engineering. The amount of stuff they have crammed in here into this 13 inch chassis is just incredible. But I've always thought, what if instead of compromising it, you just made it 14 inches? Well, that's what they've done here. This is the Dell Latitude 9440, and I believe this has everything that's great about the XPS 13, but now it's just a tiny bit bigger. And most importantly, it's got a headphone jack. And here we also have Dell slash recycle. Boop, 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 yep, plug it in, press the power button, that's how you set it up, cool. We also have in here a USB-C to A adapter. That does mean that you definitely do not get USB type A on this, but Dell is at least nice enough to include the dongles that you need to get started. So you're not just like, hmm, I can't use my mouse with my new laptop, that's cool. And here we also have a 65 watt charger. You do have a couple different options if you want to charge faster. There is a hundred watt available, but I think 65 is pretty good because it's not too large. That said though, this is a 60 watt charger that you get with the XPS 13 plus. This one's 65 watts and look at the size difference. Why, why would you ever want this one instead of the one that came with the XPS? Oh, just a first look, absolutely fantastic. Around the side, we have got shockingly 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, Thunderbolt 4, and two more Thunderbolt 4s. Now, uh, does this have a full 360 hinge? Oh, it does, fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, oh, just look at this thing. What a fine little laptop. On here we have got Dell's Zero Lattice keyboard that we first saw in the XPS 13 Plus. Although I am going to have to take away a couple of points with how they've integrated these speakers. Look at this, it kind of looks like they just sort of slotted them in there. This edge is a little bit sharp. I think you guys could have done a little bit better given how just absolutely premium the rest of this feels. Also, we have Dell's haptic collaboration touchpad, which apparently can do video sharing messages and your microphone. There is also a fingerprint reader on our power button, excellent. I believe this also has facial recognition, so getting into your laptop will be extremely simple. I can't wait to give this a nice little try. Just like I can't wait to try to get to this segue to our sponsor. Thanks to Motion Gray for sponsoring this video. Desks, we all use them, we all need them. But is your desk as good as it can be? Motion Gray offers sit to stand desks in a wide variety of models and sizes. They're simple to assemble and fully customizable with a bunch of available accessories. So you're sure to be able to pick out one that suits your needs. They also have a range of ergonomic chairs available with each one focusing on adjustability, affordability, and providing maximum comfort. Check out Motion Gray at the link down below and use code Linus to get 10% off of your purchase. The first thing I'm noticing here is that this is a very sharp device. It looks really great when you have these super sharp C and C milled corners, but it's not very nice to use. I absolutely love the pillow block corners on the HP Dragonfly. This is so freaking nice. Dell, please do that. I don't want to have to take the buffing wheel to too many more of your laptops. It also uh, is one hell of a fingerprint magnet. Now on the XPS 13 Plus, they have just this one great big piece of glass that goes all the way across, even though the trackpad itself is not actually that big. It goes to like, eh, I can't tell. There somewhere. Not that that's an issue, you get used to that pretty fast. But on the sides here, I am just, oh, gnarly. Oh, that said though, let's, uh, um. oh man, this is an absolutely fantastic keyboard. Okay, how does it compare to the XPS 13 Plus? I think that the Latitude's even better than the XPS 13, like by quite a bit. It took me a long time to get used to this kind of strange keyboard that we find on the XPS 13. So you have so little space between all of the keys and you do get used to it. So they have a little bit of a dish and that allows your fingers to feel where they're at and you get used to it relatively quickly. The one on the Latitude has just 
a tiny bit more space between the keys and it is so much easier to get that muscle memory. It took me a sentence and I am typing really fast. It takes me like an hour or two of typing on the XPS 13 plus to get used to it. Yeah, so these keys are definitely still dished like what they had on the XPS 13 plus and that just tiny bit more space between each key is making this so easy to type on. You know, honestly, I think this is an A plus keyboard. I don't know that there is another keyboard that I would consider A plus on the market right now besides the HP Dragonfly, which is the one on the Dragonfly I personally like more. It has a bit more click, bit more travel, but the one on the Latitude, oh man, it is so smooth. It is so accurate and these keys feel so freaking good. An easy way to tell if you have a good keyboard on your hands is the key stability. So if you look here, I can press on the corner of this key and I cannot get the key to like move around and sort of just like squishy squash. I can only, while pressing the corner of this, have the entire key actuate. That is absolutely exceptional Dell and I honestly think this is the best keyboard you've ever made. I absolutely love that this is a haptic touchpad because it gives you a little bit of tuning ability. So we are not actually clicking it. So like if you look here, uh, the trackpad itself is not moving. So instead they have some little tiny motors. These are maybe piezoelectric, maybe some sort of different something. But what's happening is that it is detecting the amount of force that you are pushing on this. And then once you get over a certain threshold, it makes a little vibration. So that gives you the feel of a click without actually clicking. Okay, let's see how this thing weighs in. XPS 13 plus, 1.269, nice kilograms or 2.8 pounds. The latitude comes in at, oh, real units, real units. 1.56 kilograms or 3.4 pounds. So that's actually quite a bit heavier. And we also have the Dragonfly Elite here, which is, is that the lightest of the bunch? No, that's, no. that's a dead tie with the XPS 13 yeah. effectively. Another thing that the Latitude 9440 has that is sorely lacking just kind of across the XPS line is a screen resolution that makes sense. So this right here is 2560 by 1600. So that is the 16 by 10 version of 1440p and it is exceptional for laptops of this size. You're never going to be able to see the pixels on a 4K display that is 13 inches. Whereas 1440p is nice. Like I have a 1080p display on the Dragonfly here. It honestly isn't fantastic. Like stuff like emails, you aren't able to fit as much as I want on the screen at a time. Whereas this right here, you've got that bit more resolution. You can make the text a tiny bit smaller. It still is nice and clear. And it is just such a good choice here, Dell. Thank you. Aside for the resolution being good, the overall just panel here is exceptional. It's IPS, so you don't have those deep inky blacks like you might have with OLED, but overall it is very good. We measured 560 nits peak brightness, which is good enough for even going outside for the most part. It isn't matte, so you might have to contend with, you know, the stupid lights in your office or whatever, but overall, very, very good. It is not the most color accurate display. So it's a tiny bit oversaturated, which brings our average Delta E all the way up to 2.4. Also a nice thing about the display, it's touch. So you can, you know, do your touch screen stuff here. You can flip her around, be like, oh, it's a tent now. And then keep on doing that sort of stuff. Now for performance, we get an i7 1365U, which is 10 cores, 12 threads, only two performance cores. So it isn't as performant as you might expect from a 10 core CPU, given that eight of those are efficiency cores, but it is still a very good processor for something like this. Remember, we have 32 gigabytes in this one that are running at 6,000 mega transfers per second. Wait a second. I thought Dell said 64. Oh, this is kind of strange, but you can only get 6,400 mega transfers per second with 
64 gigabyte, apparently. That's weird, but whatever. I am not about to complain about having 32 gigabytes of 6,000 mega transfers per second memory. For the disc, we have one terabyte Samsung SSD, Intel Wi-Fi 6E, excellent. And of course, we do not have a dedicated GPU in here, so you're just running the dirty old Intel Iris Xe graphics. What do you think, should we try and have a game? Let's do it. While the game is launching, I just wanna shout out that this supports MUMIMO, which allows a Wi-Fi device to simultaneously send and receive multiple data streams, and the networking on this is just exceptional. The labs noted that even when compared to gaming laptops that it was beside, this thing just absolutely ripped through the downloads on Steam like no other laptop has. All right, will we hit 30 FPS in CSGO? Uh, 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 32, 34, oh, oh, 42 there for a second. Oh man, this is bad though. It's saying 40 FPS, but oh, this is disgusting. I am having regular lag spikes in the unplayable number of FPSs. I can 100% blame this computer for why I'm being so bad and not myself because holy frig, this is one of the worst gaming experiences that I've had in a long while. And that is real, oh, look at that stutter. Our labs did a bunch of testing on some other games and it is very consistent in being bad. You do not want this laptop if you want to do gaming, you need to get something like an XPS 15 or a real gaming laptop which makes sense, but that's not what this is for. What this does have though, that could be quite nice, are good speakers. We have some up on the top here, we have some down on the bottom, right there and there. All right, treble's nice and clear. Bass is lacking. go. Okay, okay. I moved away our desk pad so that the down firing speakers actually bounce off of the table and it sounds so much better. It's so much wider. Here we go. Oh, it gets deeper now too. Hmm. Noted. Definitely place this on a hard surface if you want to get the most of those speakers. Okay, first challenger. All right, latitude 9440. XPS 13 plus is way worse. All right, that's what we needed to hear. Now, HP Dragonfly, that's the real contender. The real test now, latitude 9440. HP Dragonfly Elite is filled in this as well. The Latitude 9440 is one of the best sounding laptops I have heard in a long time. It's like MacBook level. This thing is freaking great. Good job, Dell. <laughs> this keyboard is absolutely exceptional. Touchpad, very good. This display is one of the best that I have seen. It isn't quite as fancy as what like Dell will give you with an OLED or Apple with their mini LED, but as far as just like a down the middle display goes, this is Frickin' fantastic and the resolution makes so much sense. What's the catch then? The battery life, very sadly. The HP Dragonfly, which has very similar performance, even though not quite as good of a display, will get you about 12, 13 hours of battery life. This thing right here, labs tested it, seven and a half. That is many hours of potentially working on something that you are losing by going with the latitude and it is very disappointing. One thing though that they did do to help the battery compared to something like the XPS 13 though, apparently they have mini LEDs behind these keys, which not only makes them look fantastic, but use less battery life. I don't know if you guys can tell because the XPS is white, but just the way that the light is piped around these keys is nowhere near as good as the way that it is on the latitude. It just looks so great, but it was not enough 
to compete at all with the Dragonfly in battery life, jeez. Now, I don't want to say that seven and a half hours of battery life is bad, because it is quite good. That gets you almost through an entire workday, but it's gonna be at the end of the tank when you're done. Oh, it has a good webcam though. <laughs> so first of all, I spy with my little eye a shutter. Now in the Dell Latitude, we get a full HD webcam and it does have a physical shutter that blocks it. Yep, you can see it right there. There's a little tiny red thing. Can, there we go. Yeah, so no feed at all. Turn it off. You see a little shutter go away and I come back. And this looks really good. This is one of the best webcams that I've ever seen from Dell. Well, that's not saying too much. <laughs> But it's full HD, I look nice and clear, and it's exposing very well for my face. Let's do a little turn around here. Oh, it struggled. It struggled, but it's it's figuring it out as it goes. I am overall quite impressed with this, and it looks, at least from this angle, really quite natural. Like, once it figures itself out, it's exposing my face very well, plenty of detail, and... Good job, guys. And hopefully these two mics right here picked up my voice nice and well too. Oh man, that's quick. Look at that 80 megabytes per second over Wi-Fi. Hell yeah, 896. We hit 96 megabytes per second over Wi-Fi. That's really good. Now, of course, this being a business laptop, it has a whole bunch of things that makes it just generally safer and more reliable. So stuff like if the BIOS has been tampered with or just corrupts, it can fix itself. And also, chassis intrusion detection, so hopefully it doesn't get too mad after this. I'm rather surprised though that they just have straight up Phillips screws on here. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Very simple to get off. Oh cool, we can see where your SIM card would go if you actually optioned it. So your 5G card would be plugging in right here, a little PCIe header. And then you can see where it shows SIM tray right there. And I'm guessing that is the pad that it would be soldered onto. Also in here, we have our 60 watt hour battery, which netted us, as we said, seven and a half hours of battery life and two fans and a nice little heat pipe there. Also right here, we have got our SSD. It looks like that that is the only spot that we're able to put an SSD and it is a short one. So if you want to upgrade it, you can but it's going to be quite expensive because you cannot get like a proper full size SSD. Last thing in here are two down firing woofers, which did an exceptional job. And that seems to be about it. Okay, uh, it did just turn on with the bottom off. So I'm guessing you have to configure chassis intrusion detection. It's not just gonna do it for you. <laughs> what I wanted to show though, is how the Wi-Fi antennas are run because it's actually quite smart. Now, obviously your antennas cannot just go straight through this aluminum chassis. It's not going to be great, but we do have the glass touchpad and they run up here and the Wi-Fi antennas are actually underneath the trackpad so that you can have that nice strong Wi-Fi that this absolutely excels at without having something like, well, on the XPS 13, they had to have this stupid glass touchpad chummy up here. One final thing that's fun is this bottom cover appears to be made out of magnesium, which is expensive, but this is also a very expensive device. This thing comes in at over $3,000 as configured, which is a lot of money, even for a business laptop like this. But that said, this thing is freaking excellent. Just like we have a bunch of people on a tour here, say hello to everyone, it's the outro. Hit like, get subscribed, and just have a fantastic day. See you later.